two solutions to the second order linear homogeneous differential equation are y sub one and y sub two. We're asked to determine the Ronskin and then find the solution satisfying the given initial conditions. Because we have two solutions, y sub one and y sub two, the Ronskin is equal to the two by two determinant where the first row consists of the original functions and the second row consists of the derivatives of the functions. Let's set this up on the next slide. Again, the first row is y sub one and y sub two. And the second row will be the derivatives. Let's work these out below. y sub one prime is equal to, to find the derivative, we'll have to apply the product rule as well as the chain rule. We have the first function of e to the power of negative t times the derivative of sine two t, which is equal to cosine two t times the derivative of two t, which is two, giving us two cosine two t, and then plus the second function of sine two t, times the derivative of e to the power of negative t, which also requires a chain rule. The derivative is equal to e to the power of negative t, times the derivative of negative t, which is negative one, giving us negative e to the power of negative t. Let's go ahead and record this as two e to the power of negative t cosine two t minus e to the power of negative t sine two t. And now let's find y sub two prime, which is equal to e to the power of negative t times the derivative of cosine two t, which is equal to negative sine two t times two, or negative two sine two t and then plus the second function of cosine two t times the derivative of e to the negative t, which is negative e to the power of negative t. Let's go ahead and write this as negative two e to the negative t sine two t. And then because of the negative, let's write this as minus e to the negative t cosine two t. And now we evaluate the determinant which is equal to this product minus this product. So for the first product, we have e to the negative t sine two t times the quantity negative two e to the negative t sine two t minus e to the negative t cosine two t. And then we have minus e to the power of negative t cosine two t times the quantity two e to the negative t cosine two t minus e to the negative t sine two t. The next step is to clear the parentheses by distributing here as well as here. When multiplying in the basis of the same, we add the exponents. For this first product, we have negative two and then e to the negative t times e to the negative t is e to the negative two t, since negative t plus negative t is equal to negative two t. And then we have sine squared two t, and then we have minus e to the power of negative two t, cosine two t, sine two t. Next, because of the subtraction here, we distribute a negative for the first product we have negative or minus two e to the negative two t cosine squared two t. And then for the next product we have a negative times a negative which is positive or plus e to the negative two t cosine two t sine two t. And now looking at our terms, notice how the second term and fourth term are opposites and therefore this sum is zero. Looking at the first and third terms, we can factor out two e to the power of negative two t, but let's go ahead and factor out negative two e to the negative two t. That leaves us with sine squared two t plus cosine squared two t. Remember cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one, and therefore the sum in the parentheses here is equal to positive one, 
which means Aronskian is equal to negative 2 e to the power of negative 2t, or if we want, negative 2 divided by e to the power of positive 2t. Either form is acceptable, but notice how the Aronskian is never going to be zero, and this is important to recognize because if we take a look at bullet three, if y sub one and y sub two are two solutions to the second order linear homogeneous differential equation as shown here, which our differential equation does fit, and the Ronskian does not equal zero, then y sub one and y sub two are called a fundamental set of solutions, and more importantly, the general solution is in the form of y equals c sub one times y sub one plus c sub two times y sub two. So for the second part, where we're asked to find the solution satisfying the given initial conditions, we begin with the general solution, which we now know is in the form of y of t equals c sub one times y sub one plus c sub two times y sub two, which in our case is c sub one times e to the power of negative t sine two t plus c sub two times e to the power of negative t cosine two t. And we also know y of zero equals negative four, and y prime of zero equals negative two. So let's go ahead and also find y prime of t. y prime of t is equal to c sub one times the derivative of e to the power of negative t sine two t, which is y sub one prime, which we already found on the previous slide, which is two e to the negative t cosine two t minus e to the negative t sine two t, and then plus c sub two times y sub two prime. Again, we found y sub two prime on the previous slide, negative two e to the negative t sine two t minus e to the negative t cosine two t. So now we'll use the initial conditions to find c sub one and c sub two. Let's begin with y of zero equals negative four. So using our function y of t, we substitute zero for t, which gives us c sub one e to the negative zero, which is just zero, and then times sine of two times zero, which is just zero, plus c sub two times e to the Again, power of negative zero or zero times cosine of two times zero, which is zero. And we know this must equal negative four. Well, sine zero is equal to zero, and therefore this product is zero. E to the zero is one, cosine zero is one, and therefore we know that c sub two is equal to negative four. And now we can find c sub one using the initial condition, y prime of zero equals negative two. So if y prime of zero equals negative two, again, we now substitute zero for t into y prime of t, and the output or function value is negative two. This gives us c sub one times two e to the power of zero cosine zero minus e to the zero sine zero, and then plus c sub two, which we know is equal to negative four, so let's go ahead and put that in there, times negative two e to the zero sine zero, minus e to the zero cosine zero. And we know all this must equal negative two. So again, we know sine zero is equal to zero, so this is zero and this is zero. And we know e to the zero is one and cosine zero is one. So here we have c sub one times two, or two c sub one. And then plus, here we have negative four times inside here we have negative one times one, which is negative one, equals negative two, which gives us two c sub one plus four equals negative two. 
Subtracting four on both sides gives us two c sub one equals negative six. Divide both sides by two. Simplifying, we now know that c sub one is equal to negative three. So the solution satisfying the initial conditions is y of t equals c sub one, which we now know is negative three, times y sub one, which is e to the power of negative t sine two t, and then plus c sub two, where c sub two is negative four, so let's make this minus four, times y sub two, which is e to the power of negative t cosine two t. And this is the particular solution that satisfies the given initial conditions. I hope you found this helpful.